Hey guys, what's up? Thanks for stopping by and checking out today's video where we're gonna be talking about one of my absolute favorite things, spring walleye fishing. We're gonna be sharing with you our five best tips so that we can help put you in the right place at the right time and just, man, they're pretty fish. With the right bait, tools, and tech so that you too can smash those walleye this spring I, I, I can't wait, I'm so pumped, I'm so excited, let's go. Starting things off with best time. When is the best time to go? Well, right now where we live near central Alberta, Canada, the weather is changing and winter is slowly starting to lose its chilly grip. Birds are coming back, the days are getting longer, and we know what that means. Soon the ice will be gone and we can get back on the water. April or May is usually when the walleye are spawning, and that means they're going to be out a little bit more active searching for food. And for anglers, this can be some of the best walleye fishing of the year. Might have to. <laughs> <laughs> Best time of day, you ask? Well, we've all been told that the early bird catches the worm. Well, the early worm catches the fish. This is why we get up early in the morning, folks. Just put the hooks in the water. We're already hooked up. Nice one. <laughs> That's why we get up at 5 a.m. Worth it. Worth it. Good job, sweetheart. Be on the water as early as you can and you're in for good times. Don't get me wrong, you can catch fish around the clock and sometimes, in some cases, it's, it's even better later at night. Like when we would go ice fishing, they, they usually bite around dinner time and it's perfect, right at dark. Oh, yeah. It's hot. Ryan predicted it, she's like, it's fighting like a walleye. Yeah, <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. For best results, get out there as early as you can, take in nature, yeah. enjoy the morning, and you're gonna in for some good fishing. We're out here at Pinehurst, sugar's getting bit. Oh, she's fish on! Hope it's not too big, because I can't grab the net just yet. But we are out here, and the bite is on. Nice one, sugar. Okay. <laughs> While the walleye may not be at their biggest during this particular time of year, they still like feeding on those other things that are coming to life during the spring as well. Other fish, bait fish, minnows, leeches, worms, etc. But before we get to those, we want to give you a sneak peek as to what's ahead, where we reveal to you our walleye secret weapon that helped me catch this 72 centimeter tank and helped Kelsey catch this 65 centimeter What'd you tank. What'd do, baby? <laughs> I got a big, got big heavy. Really excited to measure this guy. Best bait. We've fished for walleye in so many numerous places around our immediate area. And what we've learned is each place is a little different. And sometimes the fish can act a little different from lake to lake, place to place. There's a lot of factors, including inlets, channels, springs, natural bait, and overall depth of the lake, which all affect food supply. And sorry, but if there are no bait fish, there are no bait fish. Some lakes are super hot on minnows. Whereas others are better with leeches. Our best advice, if you're lucky enough to keep a fish for dinner, have a look in its stomach and see what it's eating. If you find that it's full of fairy shrimp, well, you might want to try a pink hook, for starters. But if you find that it's full of minnows, well, then you've got your answer. For best results, we definitely recommend leeches. Your, your best might be different depending on where you're at in the world, but for us, in the, in the spring, we go through about 500 of these easily in the start of a season. And you know what? A big walleye loves a big chunky leech. Best location. Your main focus when you go out fishing this spring should be shallow water. Are we getting that? Shallow water. How shallow you ask? Well, our best luck is usually around the 12 foot and less mark down to about six or four feet. The more important question is the overall bay the metrics of the lake and how the depth plays out. Look for structure on the lake, or in other words, a particular place for fish to hide. All I in particular love rocky shallows and sandy banks, and above all else, drop-offs. As the season progresses and as water temperature starts to rise, the fish will adjust by moving or transitioning to warmer water. And it may take a different tactic to bring them in from that deeper water. In fact, most of the tournaments we've been in, it's actually against the rules to fish in that deeper water because it's harder on the fish, so 
Best fish that shallow water. I'm telling you, that's where you're gonna find the fish. Best tools. When it comes to tools, there's no limit to the amount that you can spend trying to find and catch fish. And while it isn't necessary, I will say this, there's rarely a time when I go out on a boat without a sonar of some kind. We run Hummingbird Helix units on our boats and there is no doubt that they can help level up your game. You'll hear more of these in the next one, but for now, let's focus on more practical things. A good net, for starters, is worth its weight in gold. Get one of those extendable ones that you can use to reach into the water. Make sure it isn't full of holes. Next, we suggest you get yourself a decent rod and reel setup. We recommend the amount that you spend should parallel the amount of time that you're gonna be spending on the water this summer. If you're one of those people that just enjoys getting out on the water, you know, maybe you'll go out a few weekends this summer, but that's fine. Then you should buy a budget rod and reel, unless, you know, you like having all the latest, greatest stuff, in which case you could spring for a little bit nicer setup. But if you're out there every day this summer, ripping lips and getting after it, baby, you're probably gonna be a little bit more serious and spend a little bit more on your equipment. Ugly sticks have never done us wrong. White bird favorites are some of our most suggested fishing rods, especially if, if you like a good responsive rod with lots of action. I got one. <laughs> just feels so good. So good. And please, here's a free piece of extra advice. Have more than one rod, even for yourself. That way you can tie a couple different hooks, switch back and forth, see what color or lure or presentation that they're favoring at the time. Because when it comes time to catching big fish, every second counts. The best tech. Now we've invested a lot into the tech in our boat because I'm a firm believer that the more I know about that body of water, the better off I'm gonna be and the more chances I have of catching bigger and more fish. I want to know the depth. I want to know where the weed beds are. I want to know the size of the marks on the sonar, how big they are. The more, the better. And when it comes to tech, the more you spend, the more you're going to know. While these big units may not be necessary, they do provide valuable information. But you can get a great entry-level sonar for around the $200 mark. How many times do you go to the lake and automatically go to the same spot every time? Or you just go to where all the boats are because that's where the fish must be, right? Well, yes, but what happens if the fish just aren't there or they just aren't responding like they're supposed to? You didn't load up the dog, the kids, the trailer and all that stuff just to get to the lake and spend your time in an area where there are no fish. You can even usually find a relatively a relatively accurate bathymetric map of the place that you're at online, free on Google search or whichever. Especially if you're out towards the Great Lakes area or the coastal regions, you've got much more reliable charting systems out that way than we have here. As promised, as for a bonus, we're gonna talk a little bit about technique. Now this is a highly controversial subject because there are literally so many different ways that you can catch a fish. Bottom bouncer, so this goes down to the bottom of the water and then we've tied off the tail of it a leader that goes to our crankbait. Today we're towing the lucky bug black and red. And in the end, that's what makes it so much fun. The easiest way to catch a fish, put a hook in the water. And after all the fish we've caught over the years, you know what I found out? The best way to catch walleye is to have numerous options at your disposal. If jigging isn't working, then you might need to try and start moving that bait and change your presentation to help trigger a bite. Lindy rig trolling is one of our favorite ways to catch fish on a move as opposed to hitting spot lock or throwing the anchor out and spending a couple hours in the same spot. Oh, oh no. <laughs> we totally, totally screwed that up. <laughs> the last one. It is windier than the out here. It is rough as shit. But you know what? We're fishing. Our favorite and undoubtedly our go-to technique is slip bobbers. And you've probably noticed that if you've watched some of our full length features. In fact, that's how I caught this 72 centimeter giant in the first week of June last year. A slip bobber and a tiny schnell hook with a leech. Oh my God, what a beautiful, that, that bite. I tell you, big fish like this, they hit differently. You can tell this fish tasted it probably five or six times before it took it. In case you can't tell, we love our walleye fishing, but we also get a good rip out of chasing uh, lake trout, 
Peter. Northern Pike. Oh my God, look at this. Perch, burbot, pretty much anything that'll bite a hook, whether it's in a river. It's big, whatever it is, this thing is huge. Or the deep blue ocean. Bloodline Adventures in Costa Rica. Be sure to check out this video right here where we're gonna show you the number one accessory you're gonna need if you're going anywhere near a boat this summer. Thanks for the subs, we'll see you in the next one.